yeah flask model of uh, game of life yeah this one does like a full uh, game of life uh, simulation so we're primarily in a flask application we're trying to rely on javascript as much as possible and yes i can do stuff in the back end currently but yeah trying to not overload my server so there's currently not much in the not much is happening at the background so I need the style CSS. We have uh, HTML. We'll run the application in a sec. I don't think it's working at the moment. Well, because the code is not complete. Function category P5. Yeah, we're using P5. Where is the content? Then the where's the event listener? We should have event listener. If we don't have event listener, it's not the full code. Below is a complete and functional JavaScript code using the P5.js library for your interactive model of life. This code incorporates all required functionality, including dynamic grid resizing, material application with mouse events, and grid updates for simulating different materials like sand, water, rock, and life. Yeah, rock and life. Uh yeah. What else should we add? Uh, neurons. Life neurons, how many? Yeah, we'll get to it in a sec. Instance mode. The code is wrapped in an instance mode closure in UP5 function P. It encapsulates all B5, JS functions, variables, and behaviors. This ensures that your code runs only after the B5, JS library has initialized, preventing errors related to undefined functions. Dynamic grid size. The grid size adjusts dynamically based on the slider input. When the slider is adjusted, update canvas size is called resizing the canvas and reinitializing the grid. Material application, mouse events, mouse pressed and mouse dragged, apply materials to the grid. This checks if the mouse coordinates are within the canvas bounds before applying materials. Continuous simulation, the draw function checks every 10 frames to update the grid, simulating the movement of sand, water, rock, and life according to specified. Visual representation, show grid, visually represents the grid, drawing each cell according to the material type, found appropriately by get color. It's uh, doing something. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's all... <laughs> Uh, it's always like that. Is that uh, there's something missing? Uh, can we regenerate, update the HTML code? And also, currently, we have the CSS script missing. Can you generate that as well? Yeah, but that's the idea of it. So that you can uh, select different stuff. Currently, they're all doing the same. Obviously, the code is uh, not complete. Yeah, we need to update our HTML quickly. HTML, HTML. Why did it put the styling into the HTML? That's fine for now. We have that Ajax B5.js. We should also have our main JavaScript. Where is it? Where are we? Call JS, we should also call our own JavaScript. Have the styling in the HTML as well, not ideal, but okay for now. Send what on earth? What on earth? Oh, that was too loud. Let's <laughs> shut up. The camera shut us. Get the hell out! <laughs> uh, okay, we might have not complete code because it's only doing send, <laughs> no other materials. So something must be missing. There's no life. Uh, here's currently what we have for the code how to fix exactly so the application is uh, functional is it hallucinating stuff or no we do have that application let's do a console log inside it and let's format the whole document let's see if we get any errors in the browser Looks like yes, main JS. Uh, that's a problem, isn't it? It's in the static folder. Yes, but why can't I find it? 
are you talking about? This is the jobby for GitHub Copilot. Select the whole code, give it the error, the error message saying uh, in the case main.js could not be found, or like what? Didn't actually fix anything. Why? Server configuration. Nah, there's no bloody server configurations. No, there are server configuration. There are no problems with the server configuration. Main.js is not found. Come on. Silly, silly, silly goose. The easiest thing would be to create relative path. A call static main.js. Okay. That, that meant to be a static folder. What are you doing? That should be shortcuts for the different materials. Why there's a canvas? We don't need that canvas. Yeah, we're not calling it anyways. You can get rid of it. It's only doing sand. Sand is not falling. Destroy is not working. Do, 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 do. Destroy. Destroy. I don't know. Is it even related to biomedical <laughs> engineering? <laughs> Um, console log inside the uh, not working. Clear, 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 clear. Let's check the settings. Stop clear, clear when I say clear message input when I say clear. Clear. Doesn't work. Clear. It does work. Clear. Okay, a couple of things. We only have sand at the moment. Even if I select a different material, sand is being placed. Also, sand meant to be, I guess, dropping uh, to the bottom of the um, canvas as opposed to rock that should just stay where it is. Also, <laughs> make a comment if this is relevant to biomedical, biomedical, biomedical engineering. To fix that code something obviously very wrong with that display grid size doesn't do anything there's no life there's no life i mean it's related to biomedical engineering because there is life meant to be life meant to generate life it sounds like there might be a bug in the apply material function where it isn't correctly switching materials based on the selection this is probably why only sand is being placed regardless of the selected material to fix this, ensure that the apply material function reads the correct value from the selector and applies the correct material to the grid. Okay, why didn't you generate this function properly to begin with? This ensures that the material selected from the dropdown is correctly applied to the grid, regarding the behavior of sand and rock. Sand should fall down the grid towards the bottom until it encounters an obstacle. Rock should remain static where it's placed unless moved by another process. Relevance to biomedical engineering. Simulating different materials and their interactions can be relevant to biomedical engineering, particularly in areas like tissue engineering where understanding cellular environments is crucial. Modeling how different cells or materials interact can help in designing scaffolds to mimic biological tissues. Additionally, simulations similar to sand or water flow can help in understanding fluid dynamics in biological contexts, such as blood flow or the movement of other bodily fluids. While it's generating, go check out a bionicales.com. There's quite a few interesting tools. This was the last uh, one that uh, is, I don't, know what, I don't know what that was, something in the camera, it's not part of the tool. This one's simulating uh, different uh, types of uh, vision impairment. Go check it out. There's a description at the bottom and let me know which other vision impairments would you like me to add to this uh, simulation? Uh, what do I currently have? Cell. Oh, that's some troubleshooting as well. Don't have this function. I'm not even calling this function. What are you hallucinating about? Ensuring that each material type can be applied and functions as intended within your grid. If issues persist, consider isolating the problem by testing one material at a time and checking for any overriding settings or errors in console logs. Do I need the mouse press and mouse dragged functions? Currently, I don't have them. There is a mouse is pressed function, but that's something else, is it? 
and you do not need any additional mouse interaction handling. You do not need to change anything. But the materials are still not switching between them. If the materials in your simulation are not switching properly when selected, it likely indicates an issue with how the selected material is being retrieved or applied in the apply material function. Ensure that the ID used in cell, parent, material select matches exactly with the ID of the container in your HTML. Any discrepancy here would mean the dropdown isn't properly displayed or functioning. No, those are fine. In some cases, invoking functions directly inside the draw loop without proper conditions might lead to unexpected behavior. Ensure your logic only applies material if a mouse event actually occurs within the canvas bounds. It keeps going for the uh, if mouse uh, pressed, which don't need this function, do I? I already have P draw. Okay, we're getting stuck here. We are getting stuck here. Having still the same problem. Here is the updated code. Oh, by the way, GPT-4 changed, changed a few things. They now don't actually have the numbers for the limits for per hour of how many a prompts you can do per hour but they do say usage limit may apply so i guess depends on uh, how heavily it's been currently used or not can okay, html we need to check and want to destroy that's fine material select ensure the container is present yes it is present grid size Material select. Okay. Why do we have it twice though? Sea sand. Okay, we have water. We have rock. Life. <laughs> this is life. Destroy. Wait, this destroy. Yeah, destroy is working. Life. It's also destroying. Okay, a couple of things. A uh, water is not uh, falling down. Sand is not falling down. Rock works okay, so it stays where it should. A um, destroy is working perfectly well, but then life seem to also destroy. Uh, so not sure what's up with that. Also not sure why we have two drop downs. Can we quickly fix that as well? And here is the current code that we have. Let's also see, I also want to see when will we hit the limit of this um, session. It's still not falling. Life is still destroying. Yeah, this was a bad uh, grid size. Doesn't change. Destroy works okay. What I meant to uh, generate life. It also meant to fall to the bottom of the screen. Sand also meant to be falling to the bottom of the screen. Meant to be falling to the bottom of the screen. Grid size doesn't change. The controller of grid size doesn't actually do anything. There's still two drop downs. Is there any simple way of getting rid of it? Seems like the second is working okay the first one is uh, not doing much it looks like there are several issues to address in your simulation okay that's so <laughs> wrong <laughs> wrong language uh, what language is it uh, ah. if sand and water aren't falling as expected ensure that the logic for handling their movement respects gravity and other materials presence the conditions in handle sand and handle water functions seem correct. To ensure they're triggered properly within the update grid function. Sand, water. What on earth? It's only happening with no. <laughs> um, is that intentional? I don't I think so. Destroy. Destroys and then. What? A JavaScript. Let's check that. The cell create select. Yeah, we have it in there. Oh, that's working. Uh, 
the other areas. No, that's fine. Okay, sand and water. Sand and water doing this weird thing when you place them. They also get placed in a mirrored location. See, image attached. Also, sand and water not uh, dropping down as they should. Rock is working well. Yeah, I guess that uh, mirrored uh, location for the water is where it's an attempt for it to actually flow uh, towards the bottom of the screen based on gravity. Same with sand. Rock can stay where it is. So that's one working okay. Yeah, destroy works okay. Uh, but life is doing something. So life meant to be doing the rules of the game of life. It meant to be generating new life around water. I think the color of it is uh, black, so I can't potentially see it. Can we check test for that? Um, here's the code again, just in case. Yes, we have a mirror issue. Sand water not falling, handle, sand handle water. Conceptually correct for the handling gravity, <laughs> however. <laughs> uh, no, they are not. Surely hold uh, the movement when encountering no material. Uh, um, Color visibility, update grid. Make sure update grid does the correct uh, colors and stuff. So we have uh, a potentially better version of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's not right. Obviously, rock. It doesn't do it. Yeah, now send us this weird thing. If it's flowing somewhere, I can't see it. Destroys okay. Can't even take a, a screenshot of it because I need to move the mouse for something to be visible. Yeah, life. It changed the color of life. Yeah, we have something running. Still has that uh, mirrored thing. It's meant to be life around water. Water meant to be flowing. So for example, if you have a rock uh, here, so water meant to be flowing down like that. Somewhere in the code we have that this life destroying rock looks like it should uh, not be the case. Um, okay, a couple of things. We seem to have life uh, destroying rock. We have this weird uh, mirror effect where life, water, and I think sand as well are appearing on uh, both sides of the screen. Uh, can we make sure water and sand are actually flowing downwards as per gravity? They should uh, also interact with the rock. Can we also make sure that where water is generated there is also life generated around it yep i have to go over the rules of life should the rules of life be right it's only doing it on one side of the screen not the other why the behaving different something we meant to flow the coordinates need to make to sh make sure. Uh, I suspect we might have to regenerate the whole code from scratch. 
supposedly not counting neighbors properly. Oh, come on. These adjustments should help in smoothing out the functionality of your simulation, ensuring materials behave as expected and eliminating the JavaScript errors. Considering the HTML refreshed version of the HTML doesn't work as expected. Suspect the life stopped. Life stopped. Shall we start? Uh, let's try a new chat. That is a Flask application. We have index HTML JavaScript. There are a few issues with this code. Water and sand are not behaving as expected. I expect them to fall to the bottom of the screen. Rock is working okay. A life is uh, not uh, doing much. And also we need to make sure that uh, life is created uh, around where water is. Yep. So we started a new uh, GPT-4 chat. See if uh, we can improve the application suggesting to change how the sand is being handled currently there's not much to it handle sand oops handle sand handle water it's not moving if you want to model life perhaps based on conway's game of life it seems like you need a more accurate simulation for creating and sustaining life based on certain conditions. Eh, uh, that's okay, why? And the water. To make sure it's uh, used correctly. Um, and the life is not complete. We also have apply material. Apply material function. So destroy. Yeah, I want to place uh, life near water. This revised logic will allow you to place life only adjacent to water, providing a condition that ties the creation of life to the presence of water, as per your specifications. Um, bo 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 bo. Let's check. For errors. Yeah, no. Can we just go from images? So just gave it uh, this image. It's obviously wrong. Let's see if it can pick up on what potentially might be wrong with it. That's right. It seems like the water and sand are behaving as expected because they might be clumping instead of flowing. Here's a deeper dive into potential issues and improvements. Sideways displacement. It's good to see some horizontal displacement logic in your updated functions. If it's still not behaving correctly, you might need to adjust the priorities or the conditions for movement. For instance, water typically spreads out more than sand due to its lower viscosity. This can be modeled by checking more aggressively for sideways displacement opportunities for water. Update order. The order in which you update cells can affect the behavior of falling particles. Typically, updating from the bottom up, starting from the last row to the first, can help in simulating gravity more realistically, as it prevents overriding changes that still need to be processed further up. Performance concerns. If you notice lag or slow updates, especially with smaller grid sizes, more cells to process, you might consider optimizing the grid update routine. One common method is only updating cells that have changed or are near changes, rather than the entire grid each frame. What was this? Ah, right. Uh, okay. <laughs> Not exactly. Destroy. What? It's super weird. Nah, that doesn't look uh, realistic, does it? Uh, it seems like you've successfully created a simulation with, with distinct behavior for different materials. If there's any specific behavior or feature you'd like to improve or troubleshoot based on your latest simulation screenshot, please describe what you are aiming for or what issues you are noticing, and I can help refine or adjust the code accordingly.
Uh, yes, uh, the sand and water do not behave realistically. The water also should not uh, should flow, not uh, behave like sand, like uh, clumping into a pyramid structure. Sand should clump into a pyramid structure, but then it should be flowing grain by grain to the bottom of the screen and then piling up. Water should just be flowing. In other words, we need a more realistic model of sand and water. Also, bring back life. It's uh, currently not uh, doing anything. Rock is working really well. Yep. Yeah, not sure if it's quite uh, relevant to biomedical engineering, but uh, uh, let me know what you think should it go on the bionic chaos website to improve the realism of your simulation particularly for water and sand and to make life behavior more dynamic we need to refine the handling functions based on the physics of fluids and granular materials here's how you can adjust your model for sand which tends to pile up but also needs to flow grain by grain we can enhance the downward and sideways logic to better simulate the granular flow water should flow freely and spread horizontally much more than sand we adjust the logic to allow more horizontal displacement and less piling up. It was no good, was it? Let's not... Uh, no, I get what it's uh, trying to do. But it's not good enough. Uh, back to the simulation of life. Not sure. Um, so sand is behaving okay. A couple of things though, it should be first falling down grain by grain and only when getting to the bottom of the canvas starting to pile up into a pyramid structure. Same with water, it should be flowing down, dripping down um, drop by drop to the bottom of the page and then flowing is uh, spreading equally across the available surface um, life is still not there we should be able to create life when the life option from the drop down menu is selected but also life should be created around where water is Regarding your simulation suitability for Bionicaos.com, the use of a dynamic system like the one you're developing can indeed be relevant, especially if it's framed in a way that relates to real-world biological or ecological systems. For example, your simulation could be used to model the distribution of resources in an ecosystem or the spread of organisms in a habitat. The visual and interactive nature of the model could make complex concepts more accessible and engaging to your audience. Now, let's refine the simulation based on your requirements. Sand and water flow. You want both sand and water to flow more naturally to the bottom and spread out realistically. Life creation and dynamics, you're looking to have life appear more dynamically, especially around water, and behave according to a set of biological rules. Here's an adjusted version of your code with these specifications in mind. For both sand and water, ensuring they move naturally involves adjusting their movement logic to simulate gravity and lateral dispersion correctly. Sand should primarily fall downwards but disperse slightly upon reaching an obstacle. Water should flow downwards and spread laterally much more freely than sand. For life to be more dynamic and dependent on water, you might consider adjusting the rules for life creation and maintenance. Make sure that your update grid function and others properly utilize these adjustments. It's also crucial to test these changes to observe the dynamics and make necessary tweaks. This iterative process will help you fine-tune the behavior of sand, water, and life to achieve a more realistic and visually appealing simulation. Sand should primarily fall downwards but disperse slightly upon reaching an obstacle. Water should flow downwards and spread laterally much more freely than sand. It's not working as expected. Uh, can we redo the whole logic, probably the whole uh, JavaScript code? Let Let's try a different approach. Can you generate generate all the prompts required to build the application based on the requirements in uh, this discussion? Where while it's generating, go check out bionicaos.com. There's a lot of interesting tools, and you will be supporting the project that way. And don't forget to leave your feedback. Sure, here are the structured prompts that can guide the development of your simulation, covering all the requirements and features discussed. 
1. Set up the environment, prompt. Set up a basic p5.js environment within a Flask web application. Ensure the p5.js script is properly linked and accessible. Initialize the drawing canvas and prepare the basic UI elements such as a material selection dropdown and a grid size slider. R2. Define materials and constants prompt. Define constants for the different materials such as sand, water, rock, life, and empty spaces in the grid. These will be used throughout the simulation to determine the behavior of each grid cell. 3. Grid initialization. Prompt. Create a function to initialize the grid. Each cell should start as empty. This grid will represent the space in which materials can be placed and interact. 4. Dynamic grid resizing. Prompt. Implement a function to dynamically adjust the grid size based on user input from a slider. This allows the user to modify the resolution of the simulation on the fly. 5. Material placement. Prompt. Develop a function that allows users to place materials on the grid by clicking on the canvas. The material placed should correspond to the user's selection from the drop-down menu. 6. Material adjacency check. Prompt. Create a utility function to check if a given cell is adjacent to another material, specifically water. This is critical for the dynamic creation of life in the simulation. R7. Sand behavior. Prompt. Code the behavior for sand in the grid. Sand should primarily move downwards but also disperse sideways slightly when it encounters an obstacle directly below. 8. Water behavior. Prompt. Develop the behavior for water, uh, making it flow downwards freely and spread laterally much more than sand. Ensure that water can move around obstacles in a fluid-like manner. 9. Life dynamics. Prompt. Implement the rules for life based on a simplified version of Conway's Game of Life, where life can form near water if surrounded by exactly three living cells and can die from overpopulation or loneliness. 10. Simulation logic. Prompt. Create the main simulation function that updates the state of the grid based on the behavior rules of sand, water, and life. This function should be called continuously to animate the simulation. 11. Rendering the grid. Prompt. Write a function to visually render the grid on the canvas using different colors for each material type. This function will be crucial for visually debugging the simulation. 12. Optimizations and efficiency. Prompt. Consider ways to optimize the simulation, especially how the grid is updated and rendered, to improve performance as the complexity and size of the grid increase. 13. User interactions and feedback. Prompt. Ensure that user inputs through the material selection dropdown and the grid size slider are responsive and affect the simulation immediately. Provide visual feedback for user interactions. These prompts cover the setup, implementation, and refinement of your simulation ensuring that each component is addressed systematically to meet your requirements for a realistic and interactive model. Each prompt can be used as a milestone in the development process, helping you track progress and maintain focus on the key features of the simulation. We just pop the, this image and the code, see if it comes up with uh, what might be wrong. Adding console logs to trace the coordinates can help ensure the entire canvas is interactive. It's pretty interactive. There's no problem there. And now, now we're talking. <laughs> okay, let's see if it can pick up on the problem, particularly with water. I like how sand. Yes, sand should not do that. Should it? And life should do the the life business. <laughs> do the life business. <laughs> uh, but it's much better than what we had before. Starting fresh helped a lot. Starting fresh helped a lot. It looks like your simulation is evolving nicely, showing the behavior of different materials and how they interact within your environment. From the screenshots, we can see how materials like water and sand behave under gravity, and there's a visualization. It's not that it's being lazy, it doesn't want to generate code. We have update water, no. Also, how do we make sure life does the life business uh, based on the game of life uh, rules? Can we make sure the rules are implemented in the code? Also, with sand 
and water can we make sure that when they spread sand remains as pyramid and the water spreads across the surface however we need to make sure there is uh, no more grains or drops generated than uh, was created by the mouse dynamic grid resizing adjust grid dimensions based on user input from a slide this script focuses on foundational features to ensure the drawing of the mouse works correctly we haven't timed out on the prompts yet which is great but i have a feeling it's gonna happen anytime soon yeah okay we're generating the whole javascript regenerating it because every time I fix something uh, some basic previous uh, functionality stops uh, working uh, that's not cool I haven't finished generating did it yeah github copilot is really good at like picking up code uh, that we have here at the bottom of the page we have empty send that doesn't move uh, what the uh, rock empty is the same as rock life the grid is not visible in case rock what if we remove this redraw no we need it we need it uh, bum, 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 bum. can we rearrange the order and make uh, empty well first call it um, erase delete whatever and make it last make it the last option in the drop down menu Let's see what it does send what a rock life empty looks good Let's see if it actually and we have send what a rock life empty uh, empty 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 color 255 is white is it must be okay all the drawing works well that's great news but can we bring back the more complicated model of sand water and life sand meant to drop grain by grain down the screen and form a pyramid structure water meant to drip down drop by drop and feel and feel the and feel the space the surface below it life should follow the game of life uh, rules so make sure they are implemented correctly and also life should be somehow generated around uh, where water is and while it's generating go check out bionicchaos.com there's lots of interesting tools we also have this uh, neural uh, network simulation actually start running as soon as you open the page and it will try to converge to that uh, uh, data a noisy sinusoid you can change some parameters of the noisy sinusoid increase noise add more data points so on and so forth and see how it affects performance of the neural network so hopefully you find it useful and go check it out let me know what you think and yes might be a bit uh, computationally heavy so uh, let me know how well it's uh, working on your machine so i have this list of uh, data sets if anyone knows good data sets that i should be adding to this uh, table to let me know glad to hear that the basic drawing functionality is working well now let's refine the behavior of sand water and the life material to be more realistic and interactive 
Detailed JavaScript implementation for material behavior. Sand should simulate gravity and pile up in a pyramid-like shape. Water should flow down and spread out over surfaces. Life should follow Conway's game of life rules and have some interaction with water to generate life cells around water areas. Here is the updated JavaScript with these functionalities. Turn this text into HTML. Back to JavaScript. Should be around 140 lines. Yes, 154 sounds legit. This JavaScript code integrates advanced behaviors for sand and water, as well as a basic interaction for life near water, enhancing the realism and interactivity of the simulation. Adjustments or additions can be made to further refine the behaviors or introduce new features as required. Okay, this code. Update life. Uh, why is it not uh, doing anything? There are no errors in the console, but uh, the application is not working as expected. Water is not flowing, sand is not falling. To address the issues where water isn't flowing and sand isn't falling as expected in your simulation, we can enhance the JavaScript logic for behavior of sand and water. The adjustments will focus on improving how sand accumulates and how water spreads horizontally after trying to flow downwards, and should simulate gravity and pile up in a pyramid-like shape. Water should flow down and spread out over surfaces. Life should follow Conway's game of life rules and have some interaction with water to generate life cells around water areas. Key changes. Sand accumulation. Improve the logic for sand to check not only directly below, but also diagonally, aiding in forming a pyramid-like structure. Water flow. Enhance water spreading logic to try moving left and right if the direct path below is blocked. Life interaction. No changes made here, but ensure the logic for life generation around water is handled if needed beyond the standard Conway's game of life rules. Efficient redrawing. Added checks to only redraw cells that have changed since the last frame, minimizing unnecessary competition. The web application described, featuring interactive simulations with elements like sand, water, rock, and life, can be an innovative tool for educational and research purposes in biomedical data engineering. Here are specific technical reasons and examples of its relevance. Visualization of complex biological processes. Biomedical data engineering often involves understanding and visualizing complex biological processes which can be analogously represented through simulations in the app. Cellular behavior. The life component mimicking Conway's game of life can serve as a simplified model for cellular automata, which is crucial for studying biological growth patterns, cellular interactions, or tumor growth dynamics in a visual and interactive manner. Diffusion processes. The behavior of water in the simulation could represent diffusion processes, essential for understanding how substances move across cell membranes or within tissues in the body, which is a fundamental concept in pharmacokinetics and drug delivery systems. Modeling and simulation. The application can be used to model and simulate environmental conditions that affect biological phenomena. Material interaction. Just like sand and water interact in the simulation, different biological materials, e.g. proteins, cells, interact in various ways, and understanding these interactions can lead the, to better biomedical solutions like improved drug formulations or new materials for biotechnology. Ecosystem simulation. Simulating how different elements interact could help in ecological modeling within biomedical contexts, such as predicting the spread of pathogens in a population or the effect of environmental changes on public health. This web application serves as a practical educational tool. Interactive learning. By manipulating variables and observing outcomes directly through simulations, students and researchers can gain a deeper understanding of the underlying principles of biomedical processes. Engagement and accessibility. Interactive simulations make complex concepts more accessible and engaging, encouraging exploration and self-driven learning, which is beneficial in fields that require a strong grasp of dynamic systems, such as systems biology and synthetic biology. Research and development. In research and development within biomedical engineering, simulations like these can be prototypes for more advanced models. Algorithm testing. The logic used to manage interactions between different materials can be analogous to algorithms used in computational biology for predicting molecular interactions or behavior under different physiological conditions. Prototype simulations. Before committing significant resources to physical experiments, researchers can use such simulations to explore hypotheses about material interactions and dynamics in a controlled, cost-effective manner. Example scenario. Imagine a scenario where a researcher is investigating a new drug's diffusion through a type of tissue. 
using the water simulation as a proxy for the drug and sand or, or rock for different tissue densities, they could visually study how the drug permeates different tissues under various conditions, adjusting parameters to simulate body temperature, tissue density, or the presence of other substances. In summary, this web application, while simple, holds potential as a foundational tool that can be extended to model and visualize a wide range of biological and ecological systems, making it a valuable educational and research resource in biomedical data engineering. Yeah, I think this is what the uh, reaching the limit in the current uh, model uh, looks like, considering it's uh, just thinking forever. From your latest screenshot, it appears that the water behavior is working properly in the simulation. It shows water flowing and spreading across the grid, creating branching pathways as it moves around obstacles or fills gaps, just as you described it should. Really weird. It looks like the water behavior in your simulation is performing as expected, based on your description. The water is visibly flowing down and spreading out over surfaces, managing to navigate and fill spaces around the placed rock structures. This dynamic behavior is consistent with the design functionality for water in your application. Uh, yes, that's incorrect. The water is not flowing, it's not moving anywhere. Can you check the code and stop being lazy? Is it gonna hack into my machine or something? Because it's getting upset super slow might uh, finish continue next time i think this being called at all uh, update water you have reached the gpt4 limit response will be 3.5 until your limit resets in 21 minutes 21 minutes i don't understand why is it not a moving it should be uh yeah and it's just blocking me before it will uh, convert to 3.5 uh, automatically now it's just being blocked so it's even worse than it used to be before. Yeah, we're so addicted to it though that we cannot continue developing without we without it, can we? Dating water can use a GitHub Copilot for 21 whopping minutes. Let's try it out actually. Yeah, I don't like the implementation of uh, GitHub uh, Copilot. It's also refusing to. Uh, right then it code it says it's worth noting that the update live function overrides the grid that was created by update materials if the update to life and materials need to be combined you would need to modify the code to manage these updates rather than having update life override the results of update materials how can I modify the code to merge updates to life and materials in the draw function? To merge the code, draw the material, display grid, date life, date life, do life meant to do life. Yeah, what's wrong? I need to keep updating materials. Uh, do we need to keep updating materials and life? I think they are at the moment. Should call the draw function repeatedly. The no loop function is called at setup, which stops the draw. What? What? Why is it even there? Which stops the draw function from being called repeatedly. If you remove the no loop, draw function will be called repeatedly in the materials and and life will keep updating. It happened just once, did it? <laughs> Change the grid size. Okay, it's actually working. Display grid. Okay, why water is not staying visible? Looks like the grid is updating life. Seems like you're having trouble with this. Something staying visible on the code. Once I place water, it should flow down the screen and stay there. Water tries to spread. If you want water to stay at the bottom, once it reaches there, you should remove the spreading functionality. Um, 
Dead materials, dead sand, of dead water. Can't comment it out for a sec. Drop dead water only allows water to move downwards. If it cannot move down, it stays in place. There's something wrong with that screen. Okay, I don't see water stay water molecules staying on the screen. Sample, etc. This function goes to blah blah. Yeah, when updating materials, updating life. Yeah, I really need GPT-4 in its uh, original <laughs> implementation of the GitHub Copilot. Can't understand how to use it properly. After placing materials with the mouse, they seem to disappear instead of staying on the screen. Why? Update cell function. Function called the uh, mouse dragged. Should update the cell mouse currently over. Update cell function only changes the color of the cell. It doesn't update the grid. The grid. Array. Blah blah blah. To fix this issue, you should update the last grid state in the mouse drag function. Right after updating the grid. Why does not links mouse dragged? This way the display grid function will know that the cell has changed and will redraw it correctly. Hmm. Yeah, need to fix the issue of materials disappearing when uh, placed with the mouse. Extract. That doesn't still disappear. The material still disappears after being placed. So something is uh, redrawing and clearing it out. Update materials. Update sand. Update what? It update rock as well. Materials still disappear into thin air after being placed with the mouse going in bloody circles. This is the same. No, it's not the same. They don't stay. The materials are not staying where they were placed. For example, rock is uh, being uh, cleared straight after placing it with the mouse. How can we fix this? That didn't work. The rock uh, still disappears. That didn't work. The rock still disappears. Seems like it mm, kind of knows what it's talking about. Yeah, it's the order of drawing. Seems legit. Hey, that didn't help. The rock still disappears. Goals, mouse, tracked. We oh, yeah. are before that materials. It's the same. What are you talking about? This is exactly what we had before, and obviously it doesn't change anything. Still, the rock disappears. Temp grid should be declared globally. That makes a lot of sense. It's already temp grid. It's what we used last grid state for. We have temp grid like 32 times in the last. It's like the bloody, it messes up the names. Isn't that what we already use last grid state variable for? You have else if grid rock, update rock, temp grid. And the, uh, yeah, it's the same. This looks correct. The rock material should stay in place. However, oh, there's another condition of dead material. Might be causing the issue. Else if... Yeah, we don't need two of them, do we? This condition is meant to care of and change. But it's also applied to rock. It might be causing the rock to be overwritten. To fix this, you can change the condition to exclude. 
change the condition. So this is adding rock. Let's change the rock material is not overwritten by update materials function. It should go rewrite update materials. Still bloody disappears. The rock still disappears. Can you check the entire code? Yep. Don't need to say yep. Because we are in the GitHub Copilot. Draw. Change. There's nothing have changed, you silly goose. Okay. Still doesn't work. Check the whole code. Change uh, detect when you place a rock when the rock is redrawn. There is no rock in the next frame. Check the whole code. Always apologetic. Yeah, it's hopeless. Anyway, I'll try another, another time. Go uh, check out the uh, markios.com. There's a lot of interesting stuff. A uh, bunch of uh, blogs as well for you to read and enjoy. I'll see you next time. Bye.